Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, my name is Ashley Quinn Hogan, and I'm the host of tonight's episode. Um, so on this episode of Financially Speaking, we're going to talk a little bit about financial planning, financial goals, and what I like to call programming your GPS. So, um, you know, almost everything in our world today, anyways, is instant gratification, um, which means I get it when I want it. Um, and we think that, you know, everything should be instantaneous. Everything should be, you know, handed to us right here, right now. Everything we work for, um, we should receive immediate rewards for. Um, and we've been socialized to believe that, you know, everything good that happens to us happens right away, which is, is just totally not the case. And, you know, the most important things in life are not immediate. They take time. They take effort. Um, and, you know, it's, it's things that we, we work little by little over time to, to accumulate. Um, and, you know, you might be asking yourself, what does any of this have to do with, with financial, um, you know, topics? And what does this have to do with finance and investing and money? Um, and it has everything to do with it. You know, this is, this is the direction we're going. Um, and, you know, the ultimate message is that, you know, growing wealth takes time. And, um, you know, it's, it can be like a hindrance to you, or it can seem like it's, um, you know, demotivating to, to invest money and not have that instant gratification that, that you want so badly. Um, but, the, you know, the thing to remember about, you know, setting financial goals and, and all of that is that it's gratification that, you know, comes later on. And so that's the main topic that we're going to be talking about today is um, setting your GPS to, you know, a destination that gets you where you need to be. And so I guess the main the main thing I like to think about with with young people and, and everyone in general is, you know, if, if you have a destination set, um, you know how long it takes to get there. So why not start now? You know, pushing it further and further along is still going to take just as long to get there. You're just prolonging, you know, the journey. And, you know, there's there's a, a special quote um, by Tony Robbins that I like, and it's people underestimate what they can do in a decade, but they overestimate what they can do in a year. Um, and so, you know, that ties into this instant gratification is, is, you know, like we think that everything we do now, we should be rewarded for right away. Um, but we underestimate that if we start something now that we might not, you know, receive reward for right away. Um, we underestimate, you know, what the effects of that are going to be long term. And with finance, that's a huge part is, um, you know, investing a little bit of money every month or every year, or every week or, or, you know, whatever your preference is. Um, it can seem like it's, you know, it's something that, um, you know, is just taking away from your enjoyment of the present. Um, but we underestimate how much that can really impact our futures. Um, and I think that's an important point to highlight today. Um, but, you know, also, you know, in, in the rest of your life, too. And, you know, a, a question to consider for, for our listeners out there is, do you have the patience to get where you're going, even when the results you're getting, you know, are not immediately gratifying? And that's, you know, something to take into consideration. If you're not receiving that instant um, feedback, that instant approval from whatever you're doing, whether it be financial or not, um, do you have, you know, the patience to continue to do that thing, knowing that it's going to pay off long term? And so with, with programming your GPS, what I mean by that is, you know, what is your destination? You know, what is the goal that, that you're trying to achieve when it comes to investing? And it's such an important topic because, like, I mean, consider it this way. If, if you're going from point A to point B, you're inputting point B into your GPS. And it gives you a step-by-step -step instruction on how you're going to get from point A to point B. But, you know, imagine getting into your car with, with your friend, for, let's say, and you're asking them, you know, where are we going? What's our point B? And, you know, they come up with, well, you know what? I don't know. I thought I would just start driving that way and see where we end up. And although that might sound like a fun thing to do, but how, how likely is it that you guys are going to end up where you're supposed to be? It's probably not very likely, right? 
Well, it's the same thing. And that's what I mean by programming your GPS is you can't just hop into, you know, a quote unquote car and expect to end up in the financial position or achieve those financial goals that you want. If you're not even inputting a destination in there, you know, you're, you're the pilot, you're in control. You have to be the one to decide what that destination is um, and what that, you know, what that ultimate goal is going to be at the end of the day. And so when it comes to programming your GPS, um, you know, it's, you know, you're, you're talking about what is, what is this end goal? What is this end destination I want to get to? Is it, do you want to end college debt free? Do you want to have a down payment ready for when you finish college and you enter the workforce? You know, do you want to, are you saving for a trip? Are you saving for retirement? Um, are you saving for kids, marriage, um, saving for a car? Um, you know, what is it that you want to do with your money? And that's the ultimate question. And that's the question that you have to ask yourself. Um, and I mean, there's, there's probably a lot of things that you would love to do with your money, but it's, it's really honing in on those, that one, two or, or three things that, you know, are a priority for you. It's, it's a reflection of, you know, where you want to end up and, and how you want to get there. Because at the end of the day, um, you can't just follow a number of random steps and expect to end up at a destination. You have to outline what the destination is first and, you know, and then the steps make logical sense to progress to that destination. So, um, you know, that's what we're going to talk about today is, you know, how can you program your GPS to reflect your financial goals? Um, and, and what are these steps? What are the steps that we need to reach our destination? Um, you know, what do these financial goals look like? What, how are they different for, for other people? Um, you know, how do we set financial goals? What are the steps to setting those? Um, and, you know, those are all important topics we're going to discuss, but it all starts with choosing that destination choosing what it is you want to do with, with your money um, or your wealth or your investments or, or whatever it is. Um, it all starts with choosing, you know, making up your mind and, and sticking to it. So that's where the steps fall into place. So, um, you know, I'm talking about these steps, these steps that, you know, get you from point A to point B. So they get you from where you are now to where you need to be in the future or where you want to be uh, or where you're meant to be in the future. And these steps are, you know, there are daily financial habits, you know, the, the directions we take, um, you know, now the directions we start now, the ones that we've been taking in the past, uh, maybe we haven't been taking the right steps in the past, maybe point B is, you know, north and we've been, you know, going south. Um, and that's okay. That's, you know, that's part of life that's growing. That's, um, you know, that's, that's what life is, but it's about recognizing where you stand now and what are the, you know, appropriate steps that need to be taken to get to the destination that you want to be at. And so those come from financial habits and setting goals. Um, and, you know, goals are a really important thing in all aspects of our life. Um, it doesn't just, you know, they're not just financial goals, you know, life goals, career goals, educational goals. Um, setting goals is a big part of life and, and following those goals and, you know, in really ingraining those habits into us, good financial habits, you know, it's something that's hard to come by, but, once you establish them, that journey from point A to point B, the journey from where you are now to where you're supposed to be becomes so much easier. Um, and I know for me anyway, some of those financial habits that, you know, you had when you were younger, you had as a young adult, um, they start to change as, as you grow and you mature and you learn. And that's part of the process too, is, is you can't expect to be perfect right away with any of your financial goals or habits. But um, if you start now, you can, you know, um, perfect that over time. And that's, you know, that's the most important part about this is, is realizing that um, it's not about, you know, being perfect right away. It's, you know, starting now. Um, and I, I've said this in, in all my episodes is, you know, the time is, is now, the time's now to start. Um, because if, you know, if anything, you have time on your side, um, and it's better to start sooner rather than later. And, you know, with financial goals, starting now and, and laying out these financial habits and, and setting these goals for yourself um, is going to get you not only to your destination quicker, um, but it's going to be more efficient and be a more efficient way to get there. And so part of this is, you know, you got to take control of, of your personal finances and, and begin to think about, um, 
what really matters to you, right? So your goals, you know, not everyone's going to have the same financial goal, you know, it's going to differ based on, you know, your age, um, your living situation, and just is and just who you are in general, and, and what your goals are. Um, and maybe, you know, what's important to you right now, um, will we'll change in a year or two, and that's fine, too. Um, but for instance, for me, a big goal of mine is to be able to, um, you know, graduate university debt free. And, um, so, so my goals are reflective of that and how I can save money to, to end up debt free at the end of this. But, you know, maybe your goal is, you know, to save up for, for a trip or to save up for a down payment for a house, or, you know, maybe you're planning a wedding, maybe you're planning a big vacation, um, whatever it is, your financial goals are going to be, you know, sort of fine tuned to, to that destination. Um, and, you know, that's, that's another point is that it doesn't matter necessarily what the destination is. Um, you know, it could be point B, it could be point C, D, whatever the point is. Um, it's, it's the steps you take to get there that are important and figuring out what those points are for you. Cause we're all starting off at different points too. We're not all necessarily starting off at point A. Um, and so each of our steps to get there are going to be a little bit different. Um, but, you know, one of the points is, is if you weren't, if you aren't working towards anything specific, if you don't know, you know, what your destination is, um, you're likely not taking the most efficient route to get there. Um, you know, if, if you're at point X and you're trying to get to point Y, in order to, to get them, get there the most efficiently and the most, you know, the quickest way, um, you gotta, you gotta know sort of what the path is. Um, if you don't know, you know, if you're at point X and you don't know what point you're going to, um, you're probably spending more time getting there than you should. And, and what that, you know, um, equates to financially is you're probably spending more money than you should. So, or you're not saving as efficiently as you should. Um, and, you know, that's what comes with programming this, this GPS is finding out how can I be the most efficient with my money, but how can I also be the most um you know, successful with, with the money that I do have. And, um, you know, there's, there's tons of ways of going about this. Um, and it, it all boils down to, well, we'll talk about it in a bit, but it all boils down to setting these goals that are going to, to make you successful. Um, and what these financial goals look like, what they are, how they're different. Um, you know, it, it all really depends on who you are as a person, you know, what the, what point you're, you're trying to get to where you are now financially. I mean, some people have a ton of experience investing and saving and, um, and bringing in money. And a lot of us have no experience and no matter where you sit, you know, um, it, it's okay. It's, you know, you can still set financial goals. There's still lots of room for mistakes. And that's why, I'm, you know, I always say it's, it's, it's a good thing to start now start sooner rather than later, because, you know, with time on your side, you have time to make mistakes and, you know, learn and, and have these experiences. Um, and, you know, all of those sorts of things that, you know, make life life, you know, that applies in the financial world as well. Um, but, you know, when, you know, when you get going with, with um, your destination, once you program your GPS and you, you have the steps laid out for you, it becomes super, super easy to, um, you know, to follow those steps and to get to the destination um, that you want to go to. Um, but um, it's time for our first break of the show. Um, so I'm going to leave you with that thought there. When we return, we'll talk more about financial goals, um, how you can select financial goals that work better for you, um, and, you know, how to set those goals in a realistic um, and achievable way. Um, you're listening to Financially Speaking with myself, Ashley Quinn Hogan on the Inspired Choices Network. Um, when we return, we'll continue to look at financial goals and, and how to set those for yourself. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com.
Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspirechoicesnetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspirechoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Alrighty, welcome back everyone. I'm Ashley Quinn Hogan on uh, Financially Speaking and today we've been talking about programming your GPS um, and what that looks like and how you can reach those financial goals, um, how to set financial goals um, and how these financial goals differ for everybody. And, um, you know, before, before we went on break, we were looking at, um, you know, what are these financial goals? And, you know, I said, we're going to discuss how these are different and what they look like. So, you know, financial goals are their savings, their investments, or, you know, even spending targets that, um, you know, we hope to achieve over some period of time. Um, and, you know, it's usually dependent upon the stage of life that, that you're in um, and, the, and the goals that you want to want to achieve. Um, and, you know, what that, you know, kind of involves is, you know, making choices about, you know, what's a priority for you now, but what's likely to also be a priority for you later on. Um, and, you know, since you do have to make, make these choices about, you know, uh, where you are right now in life, whether, you know, the most important thing is your education, whether it's your career, whether it's a home, whether it's, um, you know, a trip or a car or whatever the case is, um, it's important to first, you know, really, really think about what matters to you um, and, and where your priorities are um, and, you know, what things in life you're willing to sacrifice in order to reach your goals. Um, because, you know, one thing is there's so much, um, you know, the, in our lives that we want. There's so many goals that we have. Um, we have short term, we have long term, we have, you know, instant goals that we want to, you know, we want right now. And, you know, we have to sacrifice some in order to appease others. Um, and it's not that we have to sacrifice them, you know, um, altogether. It's just that there's some that um, we're going to prioritize over others. And so I'll give you an example for me personally. Um, obviously, I have, you know, I have goals about, you know, owning a home, um, you know, having the nice car, you know, eventually one day getting married. Um, and those are all huge investments. And those are all goals that, you know, I would consider more long-term goals. But for me right now, more short-term goals is, is my education, is making sure that I, when I leave university, when the time comes for me to leave, um, that, you know, I have that money set aside that I can pay off those loans um, and that the investment I, I'm making in myself um, pays off, um, that it doesn't, you know, hinder me down the road. Um, so for a lot of young people that are that are in my situation, um, that are students or that are thinking about university or that have just graduated university, um, you know, a lot of a lot of us would have that same, you know, short term, possibly long term goal to minimize, you know, the investment that that we have um, that we accumulate because school is expensive. Um, and, you know, we not all of us have the ability to to just pay for that all ahead of time. A lot of us do have to take out loans. So like here in Canada, um, in Ontario anyway, we have we have OSAP, um, which gives you loans. I know there's a lot of students that get um, bank loans or you know grants or, or whatever the case is. Um, but at the end of the day, there is a lot of, a large proportion of students who go to university, they do have um, some form of student debt that they have to pay off. And, you know, starting to set your financial goals when you start university or when you're in the middle of university, as opposed to at the end of university, can maybe be the difference between, um, you know, you paying your student loans off within a few years or paying your student loans off for the next 10, 15, 20 years. 
Um, and at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's up to you, right? It's a priority on, on what, you, what, 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 what's important to you and what matters to you. And so that's where the sacrifice comes in. You know, is it more important for you to have a new car this year, or is it more important for you to, you know, keep the car that you've been driving that, you know, maybe isn't as fancy as some of your friends, but it, it gets you where you need to go. Um, but at the end of five years, you know, your loans are going to be paid off versus at the end of 10 years. And um, so with this sacrifice, you know, it comes money management. It comes knowing, um, it comes with knowing, you know, what your financial situation is, um, because it's unrealistic to say that, you know, you can set goals without knowing, um, you know, sort of what, what your financial situation is. And, and this ties into what we talked about a few weeks ago on the podcast about budgeting. And I know that there's that word again that everyone tries to run from, but it keeps coming up because, you know, it's a super important topic. Um, and it's just simply the best way to understand your financial situation. And that's what it boils down to um, is, you know, how can, how can you know um, the balance? Like how can you balance the money that's coming in versus the money that's going out? Um, and for me, the easiest, the most efficient, the most accurate way of doing that is, is budgeting. Um, and that's sort of, you know, that's why that was my first episode is, is because that's sort of the, the basis for everything that I'm going to talk about is knowing your financial situation. And the, and the best way to do that is, is through a budget. Um, and I know last, last time on the, on the show, we talked about um, the way I like to budget which is through Excel, but, you know, there are so many ways you can, you can budget now with, with, you know, iPhone apps or smartphone apps, a ton of different ways on, on laptop computers and things like that. Um, pen and paper, if you're super old school, I mean, no shame there, right? Um, it's, it boils down to what works for you. Um, but, you know, I, I'll say it every single time, you know, don't be scared of budgeting because that is going to be the baseline for everything, um, you know, that you do. And so you kind of, you know, it, you can balance the money that comes comes into you, but also that goes out um, and you can analyze how, you know, your income and your expenses sort of either match up, hopefully, or, or they don't, which is, you know, it's better to know than not to know um, so that you can see where your money is going. Um, but more importantly, make adjustments to that um, to help you, you know, Im improve, you know, uh, where you're going, improve the steps that you need to get to your destination. Um, and for me, budgeting is, is the best way to avoid debt um, because a lot of us, you know, we make mental notes of how much we spend, but there's absolutely no way that we can keep track of that over the span of, you know, a week, let alone a month. Um, so once, once you write it down and you see it all at the end of the month and you're like, oh my goodness, I spent, you know, $200 on, on bagels last month, um, you know, there's an area that can be adjusted. And you know, if, if you wouldn't have written that down, if you wouldn't have budgeted, then, then how would you know that? So that's always the basis for me is before you set any financial goals, before you get to program your GPS, before you get to figure out what steps you are, you have to know where you are. Um, because it's, it's fair enough to, you know, know where you want to be, but if you don't know where you are, how are you going to get there? Um, and, and that's where the budget comes in is um, setting the groundwork for, for where you are financially in your situation. And um, you know, there's, there's three major steps. Um, I'm going to summarize the last, the last episode I did on budgeting. There's three major, major, uh, steps to, to budgeting. Um, so listing all your sources of income would be the first, um, I like to do it on a monthly basis, but you know, that's just me. Feel free to do it on a weekly. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it yearly. That's a bit of a, a bit of a stretch, but whatever floats your boat, um, list all, so list all your sources of income on a monthly basis is the first step. Second one is list all your expenses on a monthly basis as well. And then just make adjustments um, to make sure that, you know, money is not going out faster than it's coming in or making sure that money is not going out in greater amounts than it's coming in. Um, because that's, that's, that's what we want to know. Right. And, you know, if, if the first couple months is you adjusting, that's totally fine. Right. There's nothing wrong with, um, you know, having, you know, having more being spent than is coming in as long as you're aware of it and you're making those adjustments to stop it. If you don't know, then, then, you know, you can't expect yourself to change it. It's just, it's one of those things that just is not possible. So um, that's, that's the first step in all of this is, is budgeting. 
um, and figuring out what your financial situation is, how the money coming in, you know, relates to the money going out and how you can adjust it. Um, and, you know, the adjustment is also a tricky part because, you know, for a lot of us, like for students anyway, um, you know, it's, it's pretty set in stone what, what we have coming in and, and what we have, what we have going out is the part that we can change. But what we have going in is, you know, as a student, it's pretty standard. So maybe you have um, a scholarship from school, maybe you have a part-time job, maybe you have OSAP, uh, maybe you have savings from the summer, maybe your parents help you out, um, whatever it is, um, you know, you got to make sure that what your income is, is, is more than, than what you're, you're spending or else you're just, um, you're just spending money every month. And so you're spending money every year and you're not really saving anything to pay for student loans at the, at the end of the, at the end of your academic career. So it's really important to look at your expenditures and figure out, you know, how can I minimize those or how can I make sure that I'm spending money on things that um, are actually important to spend money on. And so once you have figured out, you know, um, where you stand financially, whether it takes a month, two, three, four, whatever it takes, however many months it takes, once you figure out, you know, um, your spending habits and how you can alter those a little bit, if need be, if not, and you're already doing a great job, then, then so be it. But, um, if you need to make those adjustments, then make them, there's, you know, there's no shame in that, uh, make the adjustments so that, you know, you know, where you stand financially and that you can make the plan to get to where you need to be financially. And so, um, like at the, I guess the next step would be once you figure out where you are is, is to set these goals, these steps to get you where you need to be. Um, and when it comes to setting financial goals, it's like setting goals in any other aspect of your life, right? Um, there's a certain formula um, that works well when it comes to um, setting these goals. And then the first thing I like to make sure when I'm setting these financial goals is um, what is my overall um, priority? So what is my priority now? And what is my priority five years from now and 10 years from now? And so um, that helps me sort of lay out the groundwork for, you know, what goal is going to come first? Because we all, you know, if, if you're anything like me um, and you're ambitious and, and you have a lot of wants and you have a lot of desires, then um, you have numerous goals floating around in your head, you know, 24 um, seven. And that's, that's great. Um, that's wonderful, but um, you sort of have to have a way of prioritizing and it might not be what matters the most to you, but it's what matters the most to you in this moment. Um, so what goals, you know, absolutely cannot wait. They have to happen this year or within the next couple of years. And then which goals, you know, you have a little bit of time, you have maybe five or six years to, to fine tune things. Um, and then what goals are, you know, something that you know you want eventually, but um, it's not super essential that you have them today or tomorrow. It's something that can be more long-term. So maybe, you know, nine, 10, 11 years down the road. Um, so, you know, sit down and, and figure out what, you know, is most important to you within the next one to two years, what's most important for you within the next five to six, and what's most important for the next maybe 10 to 12 years. And then start, you know, setting some goals for those time periods. So, um, you know, what I like to do is, is follow sort of, I know we've all heard this before, like the SMART goal. Um, so something that's specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and, and time-based. Um, and I know it's, it's really like cheesy to say, but it's, it's cheesy because it works. Um, and, um, you know, that's, that's just the way it is. Um, but like, so for example, like specifics, you want to set a goal that's specific. So you wouldn't say, you know, for a short-term goal, that I want more money. That's, that's a start. That's awesome. I'm sure most of us would have that as a goal in our, in our back pocket if we had the opportunity to, but, um, you know, how can you be more specific with that goal? Well, you know, I want to make, you know, an extra $2,000 a year. Awesome. That's a good start. You know, you can get more specific, you can make that more measurable, you can make that more achievable, but the first step is just to set a goal that is specific. And so, um, you know, that's, that's your baseline is make a goal, make it specific. Um, but we'll get more into that when we come back because it is time for a second break. Um, you're listening to the Financially Speaking podcast on the Inspire Choices Network. I'm Ashley Quinn Hogan, and we will be right back after this break. 
too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Money is complicated, right? Actually, no, it's not. You don't have to be a trader on Wall Street to get a handle on your money. TV shows often instill fear to keep you believing you can't understand it or do anything yourself. If dealing with your finances brings up a lot of other F words, then you need to read All Ladies Should Use the F Word, A Guide to Loving Your Finances by Kathy Cook Noble. Kathy helps you take control of your finances and leave the other F word, fear, in the dust. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. All righty. Welcome back, everyone. Um, I'm Ashley Quinn Hogan, and you're listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. Um, before we went into our break, we were talking about SMART goals and specifically uh, SMART financial goals and how to set those um, and what those look like. And so before we went on break, I talked about the first sort of component of those goals, which is to set something up that's specific. So it's not just, you know, enough to say, um, I want to be better with my money, or I want to, you know, make more money, or I want to have more money, or I want to have more savings or more equity or, or whatever the case is. Um, you got to be more specific than that. Um, you know, it's like we're talking about programming your GPS. It's like saying that, you know, um, you live in Ontario and you want to get to Alberta and, and that's great, but you know, where in Alberta, because, um, you know, it's, it, it's going to depend. It's going to, you know, where you go is, is going to depend on, um, you know, what your goals are. And so you got to be more specific than that. Um, you know, if you just punch, you know, a province or a state for, for anyone who's from the United States in there, um, you know, it's not super specific. You gotta, you know, get a little bit more specific. So you gotta get a city, um, maybe, you know, a specific, uh, house in that city or, or whatever the case is, um, as specific as possible. So, you know, a good goal for, you know, to be specific, and I'm going to talk about student debt, because that's something that applies to um, many young people and a lot of us as students is, you know, maybe our goal is I want to pay off my student debt in five years. Seems like a reasonable goal. So that's something that's specific. Um, and it's something that, you know, we can, you know, we can um, sort of solidify um, in our minds. And so the next sort of step would be to make sure, okay, this is this is my goal is to pay off my student debt in five years. Um, is it measurable? You know, is it is there some way for me to to measure this or to track my progress in this goal? Um, and so for you know, I want to pay off my student debt in five years. Um, you know, we have that that yearly part, but you know, okay, well, how much do we want to pay per year, right? Um, so maybe. I need to pay $600 a month toward my, my balance. Maybe that's the goal is to, you know, have $600 every month set aside um, to pay for, to pay off my student debt and to make sure that at the end of the, um, the end of the month, I have that, 
um, amount to pay so that I can hit my goal of paying off my student debt within the next five years. Um, and that measurement piece can be a lot of different things, right? It could be money. So like how much money it can be time, like how much time um, it can be a number of different things, but as long as you have some unit of measurement, then you have a good goal on your hands. Um, it's not just saying I want to pay off my student debt um, every month because sure, that's great. But, you know, technically speaking, if you were to pay a dollar of your student debt, um, you know, for the month of September, then you're still kind of, you know, hitting that goal, but it's probably, you know, you're not probably not challenging yourself enough to, to be where you want to be at the end of the five years. So we have specific, we have measurable. The next one is a big one. It's achievable. Um, and, you know, that what kind of comes into play here is um, how are you going to achieve it? You know, how is it possible? How are you going to work towards it? Um, so it's great to be able to set a goal that's specific and measurable by saying, I'm going to pay, you know, um, $2,000 every month off my student debt. Um, but is, is that necessarily, is it an achievable goal? Is that something that, um, you know, you have within your means to, to do? Um, and for a lot of us as students, absolutely not. That's not something that we have in our means to do. Um, and a lot of us that are, they're adults, we don't have that in our means to do either. So you want to make sure you're setting goals that, you know, you can achieve um, because at the end of the day, that's the main part, right? You can set all the goals in the world that you want to set. Um, but if you're never going to achieve them, then, then what's the point? Um, so that's where achievement comes in. And um, for, for students, like I said earlier, you know, our income is, is pretty, for most of us anyway, this is not always the case, but our income is pretty either limited or it's set. Um, it doesn't do a lot of fluctuating. So sort of where we can, you know, make um, changes or, um, you know, switch things up is in our expenses and, um, you know, kind of figuring out, well, what am I going to spend less on to achieve this goal? You know, if $600 a month isn't just going to fall out of the sky for me to pay off my student debt, um, where is that going to come from? Maybe it's, you know, saving a hundred bucks a month on a phone bill that's, you know, a little bit more than, more than you need right now. Maybe it's saving a hundred bucks on, you know, coffees that, you know, when you could just, make coffee at home every day. I know it's a, it's a scary thing to think, but, um, you know, it's just as easy to make a coffee at home. It takes you an extra, maybe five minutes. Um, honestly, you're probably saving time if you're going to the drive through anyway, because um, those can take forever, but it's finding those areas where maybe you're spending a little bit more than you should be. Um, and figuring out, you know, how can I take money from there and, you know, sort of reuse it somewhere else so that I can achieve my goals. And that's where, you know, the achievability component comes in is you got to be willing to, if you're going to set a goal, you got to be willing to work towards it. Um, it doesn't just happen because you write it down. Um, you got to be willing to reassess and reevaluate your life and your situations to see how can I make this actually work. And so we have the first half of the SMART goals. So you got specific, measurable, achievable. The next sort of component is realistic. Um, and that's a big one, too, for a lot of us. Um, I was going to say just for students, but um, it's not absolutely just for students. It's for anyone in all walks of life, whether you're older, whether you're retired, whether you're a parent, um, teenager, whatever the case is, is if your goals aren't realistic, um, you know, it's, it's demotivating to set those types of goals for yourself and you're probably not going to achieve them regardless. And when I say realistic, it's um, you know, in the realm of finance, it's based on your lifestyle and your financial situation. Um, and there's, you know, that component again, and, you know, financial situation, you guys probably know I'm going to say it, it comes back to, you know, being self-aware and, and budgeting and knowing sort of what your point A is, um, you know, and what your lifestyle is, because it's easy to say, well, I'm a minimalist or, you know, I recognize that I spend a lot, you know, on coffee or whatever the case is, but, um, you know, you got to assess all aspects of your life and, you know, everything that you spend money on, because a lot of the time, you know, you may not even realize that you're spending, you know, ridiculous amounts of money on things that, um, you know, you don't necessarily need to be spending money on. I pick on coffee a lot because I think that's one that we can all relate to. Um, you know, there's, you never drive by a, a Tim Hortons or, well, for those of us in Canada, Tim Hortons, but maybe in the States, it's, it's a, it's a Starbucks or, um, whatever the equivalent is to Tim Hortons over there, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, maybe don't quote me on that. 
Um, don't come for me either. Uh, but you know, maybe you're spending more on coffee, but you, you never drive by those places and see it empty, right? There's always people there. Um, and you know, it's, you know, $2, a dollar, whatever it is to get your, your caffeine fix for the day. But, you know, some of us go there twice a day. Some of us go there three times, you know, um, and even over the span of a week that adds up. Right. And so maybe reassessing and, and saying, well, is it realistic for me to go from, you know, three coffees a day down to one coffee a week? Mm, I mean, if you have that willpower, then, you know, you're the most impressive person in the world to me, but you know, it's more realistic to say, maybe I'm spending, you know, going to, you know, Tim Hortons, let's say, just for the sake of easiness, um, you know, I'm going to Tim Hortons three times a day and buying, you know, a large coffee three times a day. And, you know, at the end of the week, you know, that's costing me, you know, $30 in coffee. Um, so maybe if I can cut that in half, spend $15 a week on coffee and make, you know, make two coffees a day at home, um, then, you know, you're, you're winning, right? You're, you're making that compromise and that extra money is something that you can set aside to pay student loans. Or maybe if that's not your goal, maybe your goal is to invest. Maybe you don't even have student loans. Um, and maybe your goal is to invest. There is an extra, you know, $15 a week that you can, you can be investing. And like the more aspects of your life that you assess like that, you know, the more uh, money you're going to have to, um, to, to reinvest and, um, or to, to achieve those goals. Um, and that's, you know, that's what this part is about is, is it something, are you setting realistic goals for yourself? Um, and you know, how can you manipulate your financial situation to, to achieve those goals? And so, so we've hit specific, measurable, achievable, and realistic. And the last little component is time-based. And that's the one that people forget about. Um, it's, when do you want to arrive at your destination? So it's fine to say, okay, I know where I am. I know where point A is. I know where I want to go. I know where point B is. I know all the steps that I need to take to get there. But then they forget that, you know, there's a time frame in which they want to get there. So, you know, maybe, you know, I'm going to use Canada for an example, because that's where I live and that's where I'm from. Um, you know, maybe to drive from, I mean, he's a really at home example here from London to Toronto, maybe it takes two hours. I know I'm starting in London. I know I want to be in Toronto. I know, you know, my GPS is laid out exactly how I want to get there, the steps I need to take. But, you know, if I just say, well, I'm just going to take my time. I'm going to drive, you know, 40 kilometers an hour to get there. You know, it's not going to take me two hours. It's going to take me, you know, five, six, seven hours um, to get there, which I mean, in a lot of situations, there's, there's no rush. Um, you know, it's, it's not a race, but um, if you want to be, you know, achieving, you know, all of the goals that you have set out for yourself, you know, the short term sort of the, the midterm goals and the long term goals, you got to give some, you, yourself some expectation of what's an appropriate amount of time to achieve those in. Um, and so, you know, in the example of I want to pay off my student debt, you know, that's, you know, you give yourself a time frame of five years or, you know, um, say your goal is I want like you, you really just want to invest more money. So say your goal was, you know, I want to invest, you know, thousand dollars every year so that gives you you know those components it's specific it's measurable because you've got that thousand dollars in there um if it's achievable that's sort of up to your financial financial situation same with realistic um but it's time-based because you're setting that um that yearly component in there and you're giving yourself you know if this is not done at the end of the year then all hell's gonna break loose right um but, but joking aside, that's, you know, that's an important component as well. Um, and once you, you know, you have all of these under wraps, um, you know, you can set some really, you know, solid financial goals for yourself that can get you on that pathway to getting where you need to be. And you can set goals about, um, you know, maybe if you're, you're uh, in high school right now and you haven't yet gone to university. So you're, you start setting these goals now for how you're going to save for university. Maybe your goal is, you know, I want to set aside $500 um, within the next, you know, three months to be able to, you know, finance, you know, my first year of university. Or, um, you know, maybe you're in university and you're starting to think about the fact that you're going to have student loans when you're, you're finished. And you say, well, I'm going to start holding money back now and saving some money so that I can make those first initial payments. Um, to sort of bring that down as much as possible. 
And so maybe that looks like um, I'm going to save uh, $500, you know, every two months so that I can pay off my student loans. Um, and maybe that's what that looks like. Um, but, you know, we can keep going on and on about, you know, what kind of goals um, you set for yourself, but it, it ultimately depends on what your priority is um, and sort of where you want to end up. And, um, you know, those things are different for every single one of us. Um, and it totally depends on um, your situation, whether you're a student, whether you're, you're uh, a high school student going into university, whether you're a university student getting ready to graduate, maybe you're a parent of a student trying to figure out, you know, how much you need to save in order to fund your child's education or how you can help your child out. Um, maybe you have nothing to do with school at all and you're just, you know, you're trying to save for a car, you're trying to save for a vacation or, um, you know, down payment on a house because that's a big one right now. It's super expensive. Um, and, you know, it's a hard thing to do. And I know that's one that's going to be coming for me in a few years is, um, you know, how can I save money now so that I have that money accessible for the down payment when I need it? Um, and those are all things that these goals, um, that's, those are the steps, right? You know, you have your, where you are now, you have your end goal of, of paying for the down payment, but how are you going to get there? And those are the smart goals, right? Those are following those goals along the way to, to get to where you want to end up. Um, but it is time for our last break of the show. Uh, when we come back, you know, we'll kind of go over what we've been talking about so far. And I'll give you a quick little summary of, of, you know, how you can nail these financial goals and you can program your GPS and you can get started today. Um, but let's head into our break. I'm Ashley Quinn Hogan. You're listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at BookKeepPlus.ca. Now back to the program. Alrighty, welcome back everyone. I'm Ashley Quinn Hogan. You're listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. Uh, before we took off onto our break, we were talking about SMART goals, uh, more specifically SMART financial goals. Um, you know, how to identify what your goals are, how to set goals um, that follow this, you know, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-based um, criteria, and, you know, how those goals are the steps to the destination where you want to go. Um, and, you know, what we've been talking about this whole episode is, is programming your GPS. Um, and obviously, I don't mean literally programming a computer in your car. I mean, you know, programming your financial GPS um, and how it is that you expect to get from point A to point B in the most efficient, um, you know, and timely way possible. And what that, you know, just to kind of go over what we've talked about so far is, you know, you can't get to point B unless you know where you, you know you know where you're coming from, um, and I mean I'm sure you could if if you you spent you know hundreds of years trying, but you know we want to get there efficiently. We want to get there, um, you know, as quick as possible. So you know knowing where you are comes from um, setting those those budgets and figuring out what your financial situation is, um, and it's something that takes time. Um, it's going to take you maybe a few months, maybe a couple of years to figure out sort of, you know, where you are financially. And once you've figured out that point A, so where it is that you stand um, right now as, you know, high school student, as a university student, as maybe the parent of a, a university student or high school student, um, as a new graduate, you know, as someone who's just entered the workforce, maybe you've been in the workforce for a few, few years, maybe you're retired, um, whatever the case is, figuring out what your financial situation is right now, 
um, is your point A. And then, you know, you got to figure out what your point B is, um, where you want to end up. Um, and I mean, we all have a ton of destinations in mind. It's about figuring out, you know, kind of ranking, you know, which one is the most important. Um, so identifying, you know, what's important to you in the short term, what's important to you maybe in like the midterm and what's important to you in the long term. And um, once you figure that out is, okay, you know, this is my short term goal. Let's say, for example, it's down payment on a house. So that's maybe the, the goal that you're going to work on first is, is how to achieve that, um, you know, in a timely and efficient manner. So once you have your point A, so you know where you are, you know where you want to end up, you know, what are the steps in between? Because that's that's the, the hard part, right, is the journey. Um, and that's where, you know, financial goals come into play is if, you know, right now you have zero dollars saved for a down payment and you know that you're going to need, you know, $50,000 for a down payment, let's say, um, it's great to identify that and it's great to just wish it into the world. Um, fingers crossed all, you know, all the power to you, but, um, you know, you got to come up with some form of, of plan for how that's going to happen. And that's where these financial goals come into play. And that's why, um, they're so incredibly important. Um, and, um, we talked about how they have to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based, um, because without that, um, you know, they're hard to achieve and they're hard to monitor. Um, like we said, you can set very vague goals for yourself. Um, you can set goals that aren't measurable, that you really have no way of, you know, sort of not living up to them. Like if you're saying, oh, I want to save money. Well, you know, spending, you know, saving $1, technically you, you know, you kind of fall into that. Um, you can kind of consider yourself successful on that, but that's not really going to help you in the long run. Um, and, you know, making sure you, you cap it with, with, you know, what's going to be the amount of time that I want to, to achieve these goals, because, you know, once you have your point A, so you know where you are, you have your point B, you know where you want to go, you have all the steps to get there, you just have to follow them. Um, if, you know, if we're not doing it in a timely manner, we're not doing it, you know, in, in the fashion that we're supposed to, um, it's not going to be as efficient, it's not going to be as relevant. Um, and, you know, ultimately, we're, we're not going to get where we need to go as, as quick as we would like to, or as efficiently as we would like to. And so, um, you know, that's the main gist of, of programming your GPS is, you know, one, figuring out what matters to you, right? So ask yourself, everyone who's listening right now, ask yourself, you know, what matters to me and what is my priority in this exact moment? It's going to be different for all of us. Totally fine. There's, you know, there's nothing, you know, wrong with that. Um, it's, it's where we are in our life. Maybe we're a student, you know, maybe we're a parent of a student, maybe we're retired doesn't matter. Figure out what matters to you right now and what your priority is for you right now. Then figure out, you know, what's within reach, what's attainable, you know, what's realistic. It will it take a bit of time. Will it, will it be a short term goal? Will it be a midterm? Will it be a long term? Um, that's up to you. That's up to your situation. That's what's up. You know, that's where you got to figure out where you are right now is, is budgeting, figuring out where you are um, in the present so that you know um, what's in reach for you within the next one to two years, you know, three to five, five to 10, and you can sort that out yourself. Um, and then, you know, we talked about the importance of budgeting and that's, you know, that's your, your number one, right? That's your number one, um, you know, fallback is, is having that budget and knowing where you stand, um, get a strong, a strong hold on, on your financial situation and what's coming in and what's going out and make those changes that you need to. Um, cause uh, you know, that's going to help you in the long run. Um, and then, you know, monitor your progress, right? Um, you can't, you can't expect yourself to, you know, make a budget, have all of your, um, you know, your, your income and your, in your, uh, expenses for the month and just expect it to be perfect right away. You're going to have to monitor that. Um, but that's, that's what comes with, with programming your GPS, right? Um, that's what this entire episode has been about is figuring out where you are, where you want to be, and what the steps are in between. Um, and if you follow, you know, the goals that um, the steps I set out for you, it should be, you know, a smooth transition on your journey to, you know, financial success. Um, and I'll leave you with that for tonight. I'm Ashley Quinn Hogan, and you've been listening to Financial Speaking. Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 
2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire. Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.